Hi babies, just before we get into the serious business of our podcast and I introduce the podcast, I would like to give you some very important and possibly advantageous news for you. There is a lovely lady um, who makes custom and handmade clothing, sissy dresses, TV dresses, um, adult baby things and they're all made to measure and they can create any dress or style costume and cosplay and I'm going to be featuring a link for them on our YouTube channel but what is absolutely super fantastic is that any of our babies who contact them directly and say that they are one of our Twitter followers or that they visit our nursery or that they're one of our YouTube followers will be given a 10% discount on any orders placed by our verified members. Now, they also do alterations and can change your baby clothing or sissy clothing and they have their own blog and their own newsletter. So they are definitely worth a visit. I, whoopsie daisies, I will give you the details of their name. Um, it's www.ready, the number two, roll.co.uk. So that's www.ready, R-E-A-D-Y, the number two, R-O-L-E, dot co, dot UK. So give them a visit, maybe sign up to their blog. And remember, you may not need something now, but who knows, in a few months' time, you might be wanting to treat yourself. And this lady makes some fabulous clothing. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed last week's podcast, which was the first in a series of podcasts we are recording about our ABDL community and the people who are part of it. Because like most things in life, one size doesn't fit all. This week's episode is part two and features the lovely baby Kathy, who has done more than most people know in promoting acceptance of adult babies and diaper lovers. And so, I will now turn you over to baby Kathy and give you a chance to listen to some of baby Kathy's fabulous escapades. Um, this week's podcast is the most gorgeous, delightful, wonderful, cute baby Kathy again and Kathy is going to tell us all about some of her fabulous experiences and she has had so many so I'm literally just gonna hand the microphone over to Kathy and she can tell you anything she wants. So baby Kathy, do you want to tell everybody all your wonderful experiences? Just go for it. Okay. Um, oh gosh, I don't know where to start. I guess we better start more or less in chronological order. That's good. When, when I first started off, um, I used to go and visit Mummy Hazel in Kent and we got to know each other quite well and after a couple of visits she said would I like to do a TV appearance and I was a little bit nervous because I was actually still in the Air Force but uh, another baby was asked as well and we decided together yeah give it a go so we were driven down to Southampton in a taxi the most expensive taxi ride I've ever had to, in my life but I didn't pay for it <laughs> And uh, we went live on television. We wore masks on that occasion. And uh, we, we were treated very well. Uh, there was a um, group of bikers from Brighton was part of a video link. 
um, there was uh, a high court judge that I sat I've next to. I've had one of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I sat next to him. And um, our particular presenter for um, our show was Mariella Frostrop, a really nice lady. Lovely. Um, yeah, that went well. Um, then following that, I had a couple more um, TV appearances. One was in the early days of multi-channel. Uh, I think it was the Daily Mirror group had a studio on Centre Point, And we did a live programme that was four hours long. Gosh. We, we were in segments. Okay. Yeah. And uh, sort of did 15-minute interview. But um, I was interviewed and Mummy Hazel was there. And uh, I kind of cheated. And slowly, as the evening wore on, I was getting slightly drunk. Uh, why does that not surprise me? Because even though we weren't supposed to have a lot of drink, I had a sippy cup. Well, I will say this to all the listeners. I have seen Kathy drunk. And Kathy is a funny, funny drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I got, I, I got, I mean, they didn't take me nappy off, but I did get spanked. Woo! Yeah. So, yeah, that was, that was quite uh, a, a good experience. Um, and then another TV experience was while I mentioned uh, on Twitter that I would say about, and that was, um, went to one show and had makeup done by the, the makeup department and was dressed in my dress and everything else. Walked into the uh, kind of studio bit and the director said to one of the assistants, I want that sorted, <laughs> pointing at me. What did he mean? He wanted the dress, he wanted the dress put. Uh, it, it wasn't anything to do with me. It was he just wanted the dress uh, ironed. Oh, wanted it pressed. Nice. So the, the assistant took me by the hand, led me through the studio to the wardrobe department and said to the ladies there that we need this pressing. Can you do it? So they said, yeah, no problem. So I started taking it off, taking the dress off. But the assistant said, no, you're too long. Slap me wrist and made me hold my hands up so they took it off and put it back on again <laughs> well you have to dress your babies you can't let them yeah. run amok and try well, and dress themselves so that that was a, a good one and um, then there was a couple of more um tv appearances one where there was a resident doctor he came in and thanked me oh. for helping to make his you know after after it was done he said it's made my job a little bit easier because now i can tell people a slightly more because a few people do come in and ask questions oh that's nice that, well, that was nice it's but, nice um, that you put yeah. yourself out there for others yeah so anyway you know we we got on and oh, oh the other thing that used to happen at mummy hazel's is once a year we'd have a party okay it would last all night is that kathy drunk again Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, I think most of most of them were as well. Uh, you've got one baby that comes to see you that she know. knows all, all, all about these parties. But we used to play forfeits and what have you. But mm. one, one thing that was a regular occurrence, um, as the evening wore on and we got uh, sort of low on wine and what have you, uh, the non non drinking drivers, we all sort of three or four of us would progress into the car and drive down to the local off license, all dressed in our finery <laughs> and stuck up. And uh, they were quite happy about it. In fact, they appeared on TV once Fabulous. when when the local council. Uh, put a closure order on Hazel's uh, nursery. More bigotry. And we did a we did a um, interview with German with a German TV company, and they uh, asked both sides of it. And 
the actual outcome in the end was that Hazel did have official government uh, department sanction to be able to operate the nursery. That's fantastic. But we we were we we no longer were able to go down to the uh, off license because one of the stipulations was no wandering around the streets dressed. That's true. <laughs> and yet, you oh, know. Yeah. We can have Pride Day and all the other things that we're allowed to have, and yet babies are shoved in a corner yet again. Yeah, but um, having said that, I've never had any major, ex you know, I, I've gone out, a lot of people frown upon the idea of going out in public dressed. But what I say is as long as you're relatively discreet. Exactly. It shouldn't make a difference because, let's face it, if there hadn't been brave souls in the past, uh, you know, pushing for gay rights and exactly, what have yeah. you, and LGBT, we wouldn't be in a situation where we are now, where that's not only is it sort of acceptable, it's almost Commonplace. inevitable that, you know, there's, there's, there's protections in place. You can get married, you can do all sorts, and nobody bothers. And as a general rule, nobody particularly bothers how badly or you know how how you dress, as long as you're not going around no, pushing it on stuff. people. Exactly. I mean, I've taken babies out in a trolley, fully dressed, to buy cakes. I've taken them into a cake shop, and the cake shop lady has literally laughed and said is it for you baby and you know that there are some really yeah. nice people out there i mean i know from personal experience my mum was gay and at that time it just wasn't acceptable yeah uh, anyway go, going back to the tv side of things the very last show i did was in Nor norwich um and the 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 uh researchers and what have you when they phoned me up they said do you want to arrive at the studio dressed so i i was kind of thinking well why would you want me dressed and you know i asked the question they said well you know it's up to you if you feel like it you know we're not bothered so anyway i got we got to the hotel and i booked in uh, have you got um, a reservation for Dr. Um, Dr. Jones, Hazel? And they said yes. And then I said, have you got a reservation for me under my name? And they said no. So I thought, oh, okay then. Have you got any um, reservations for Anglia, te An Anglia Television? Oh, yes, we got one for a Mr. Baby Kathy. Oh, lovely. I love so that. So I was... I, I was booked in, and at that point, I decided that, yes, I would go to the studio dressed. And we came downstairs, ready, you know, to get the taxi. And there was a huge party of old age pensioners just trying to book in after, on their tour. I had to go through the lobby with. And, you know, even they weren't phased. A couple of them said, oh, that's a pretty dress. <laughs> So, it, 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 you know, it put me at ease. And the taxi driver wasn't bothered. He said, we get all sorts of weird characters. So, yeah, it's, nothing phases, as he said. So well, that was there quite you nice. go, darling. You yeah. see, the ladies loved your dresses or your dress. <coughs> and what and about holidays? Sorry, yeah. And then um, went to, as I mentioned before, I went to Vancouver and we had... Um, holidays there and uh mommy gilly who who was my mommy at the time she was quite happy to take take me out dressed but she wasn't keen on me going out as a girl it was more or less dungarees and onesies and what have you because she thought that would be a little bit too too much well, apart from a couple of times near halloween well I must confess, that is something that I've always said to babies on the podcast. If you've got to respect how your carer feels about certain things, both on the sexual side about it yeah. and the dressing and the public. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't mind 
taking babies out in little baby dresses. But I've had somebody ask me, would I take them out literally walking down the street in just a terry nappy? Not plastic pants, no shirt, nothing, just a terry nappy. And I had to say no, because I know that would have been detrimental to the baby and to the public. Yes, yeah, no, I I agree. You know, this this is stage too far. It's 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 you've got to be sensible. That is but, true. Um, you know, and as long as you're sensible, people don't worry. I well, I, I I I went horse riding wearing um, dungarees and a onesie, and many a time we used to we used to have a, a tradition when I went, uh, and that was to. Um, have uh, different meals of different country origins. Yeah. So we, we, we'd go for a meal during the visit, and many a time I was taken either dressed or at least had to wear a bib. Of and course. And use, use a sippy cup. Yeah, of course. And went whale, whale watching while dressed, as, uh, dressed in my sailor suit. Oh, I bet that was lovely, both yeah. to see the whales and to see you in your sailor suit. Yeah, many, many times, a couple of times, you know, I've had uh, a birthday in a restaurant because, you oh, know, they've got it. a habit of singing to you on birthdays in restaurants in America. I do. And many times that I had that. One in particular, I was wearing the same um, sailor suit and they came up and lit the cake and sang the songs, <laughs> and the customers joined in. Fabulous. I, I was a little bit concerned because in, in the booth, uh, kind of one up from us, there was a family with a little girl. Yeah. And uh, I thought, yeah, maybe that's going to be a little bit problematic. You know, they're not saying anything, yeah. and they, they didn't seem to phase. But when we were driving after the meal, uh, in the traffic, a car pulled pulled up, tooted its horn, and the, the the lady wound down the window and held out a sippy cup just like mine and said, "Look, I got we got one the same as yours." <laughs> oh well, that's that. You see, as coming yeah. from you, an adult baby is a really sensitive, thoughtful way to look at it because it's like there are underage people out there and non-consenting adults and they're the people you know we've got to be careful we've got to protect yeah. them while our babies are protected and it's it's nice that you are telling all those people out that listen to this if they're vanilla people that this community cares just as much for how they feel about the situation as we do about ourselves yeah no i agree i mean yeah, like I say, I, I've I've gone through it poor security dressed in the baby outfit and set off the alarm. With your nappy pins or your tinky winky piercing? No, no, it was the um metal bits on my dungarees. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> but uh, no, because I think wearing a nappy a terry nappy through an airport is a little bit um dodgy because they could construe the pins as a weapon. Yeah, I suppose so. I didn't especially, think of that. Especially the big, big nappy pins that I use. I would never have even thought that. So I wouldn't but make a good I can't, can't see why a Velcro one couldn't be worn. Yeah, oh yeah, that would be okay and a disposable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've been through, um, like I say, I got uh, pushed, put to one side because and in America they're very strict. They've got footprints on the floor, and if you get pulled up by them, you've got to stand on those footprints with your arms out until they come and you know they don't just screen you there. You they they parade you. You put your arms out so they you know look. He's been bad. He's naughty. We got to scan him. Well. Um, Having had experience of trying to stand you in a corner when you're naughty, I bet they had a hard time. Oh, yeah. But uh, 
you know, obviously I was a little bit concerned, a bit nervous, but, you know, it went through. They just wandered, you know, down. And again, the same as going through with the, with the suitcase, well, not a suitcase, but the nappy bag and what have you. They just looked into it and said, oh, yeah, okay, fine. Nothing in there that we need to worry about. Oh, that's Unlike cool. somebody, somebody that I know took something over that they thought was, um, was it arm, almond, uh, ice, marzipan or something, wasn't it, that he took over? <laughs> no, no, it was actually, um, you know, the stuff that you clean cars with, it's like a blue block. Oh, um, right, yeah. One of, one of my babies, I'd had it sent to my baby's house. Uh, baby Bluebell had had some stuff for me delivered to her house and it was like blue blocks of some sort of thing that you use to polish and clean your car and when she was bringing them through customs coming here for a holiday for a couple of weeks she was stopped by security and they thought it was some sort of semtex or something like that so that was bluebell's experience and that was all my fault yeah <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back back to an adventure. Um, yeah. On my fiftieth birthday, uh, we went to uh, Vancouver Island and had a really nice time. And on the the return, which was actually my birthday, um, I'd been forbidden to go to the toilet for uh, number twos for. Uh, a period of time haha <laughs> and uh, I cheated a little bit because I got <gasps> up at three o'clock in got up at three o'clock in the morning and but I didn't uh, get rid of enough to stop it happening Good. so on on the ferry I had a, a messy nappy uh, <clears throat> sorry no not on the ferry just after we left the restaurant um, and um, Mummy Gilly uh, used to make dog treats out of, you know, get some liver and dehydrate it and sell it as dog treats to the local pet shops. Okay. And she became friendly with one. I didn't know this because she just said, oh, I, I, we're going to go in here to see if I can sell some of my, uh, and I was thinking, oh, no, I got all the, I got this smelly nappy on and. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So anyway, she went off to to talk to her, and I was squirming in the corner, and uh, sort of stood there, and you know, still squirming when when she called me over and what have you. And then all of a sudden, she said, "Did you do that?" I said, "Oh what? dear." There was a puddle on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> And I was thinking, oh my God, she said it right in front of me, the, the the assistant. And I was I was mortified. But I found out later that they planned it. See, clever mummy Gilly. Yeah. Oh, you you would really, really appreciate uh she she was. She's almost as uh Shall I say deviant as you? Well, she was before she retired. Oh, my God. Are you calling me deviant? <laughs> no, That's devious. Not deviant. Not, de not, devi not deviant, mummy. Devious. <laughs> Wooden spoon time, Cathy. Wooden spoon time. So uh -oh. what's your favourite holiday? Favourite holiday... Well, there's two. Both of them involve Disneyland in Paris. Uh, the first one was my 60th birthday. Yeah, my nanny uh, Gilly. And I had, a, I had green dingarees and had my dummy around my neck and what have you. And Mommy Gilly, Gilly had, came, had come over for a, a holiday as well. And we both went there and... Because it was my 60th birthday, we decided that we'd have, you know, we booked, booked dinner or lunch, as I should say, in the uh, Cinderella restaurant with oh, all lovely. the princesses. And uh, did you wear a princess dress? Well, no, I was just in my green dungarees and oh, what have you. Okay. 
Um, but it was, I still had to wear a bib. Of course. But um, when I went to the um, kind of reception information place just to make sure that the reservation had gone through, uh, I, made the, I made the assistant laugh because she said, do you need a high chair? So I said, well, actually, I don't think I'd fit. Oh. She looked at me the way I was dressed, and she laughed her head off. She said, oh, oh. I guess you wouldn't. So, yeah, I mean, that was just off the cuff. Oh, that's and then lovely. she said, it's your birthday, isn't it? I said, well, how do you know? And she said, it's easy. You've ordered a birthday cake. <laughs> oh, there you go, then. So, so they, give you a big, they give you a big sticker to stick on your chest. It says, it's, you know, birthday boy or birthday girl or whatever it is. And every time you go to the um, rides, the assistant at the ride will say, oh, happy birthday, have a nice time, and that sort of thing. They really they really stick up to their motto because one of their motto is a place where everybody is a kid again. That's and lovely. Both times I've been to uh, Disneyland Paris has been, been that statement. But uh, the second time I went was obviously, you know, is because you treated uh, us to a really, really nice family-style holiday that was superb and probably one of the best experiences I've had, you know, driving down down the motorway, down to the uh, Euro Tunnel, taken into the, the changing rooms with the changing tables. and Yeah, and somebody got talcum powder. Oh, was that me? Did I spill talcum powder all over you that time, Cathy? Hiding away from me. Possibly, yeah. Yes, I think so. And then we went for chocolates. Yeah. To Belgium. That's right. We went to Bruges, and then then we we drove to Paris, and uh, and say so we had a nice nice day in Disneyland, and we did. We 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 ran away from a hotel. We did. Oh, that was a horrible hotel. We weren't staying there, not after what I'd paid for it. And I know I lost the money, but there was no way we could stay in that disgusting shh hole. Yeah, but uh, it it was nice that you found the nice one. Oh, I know. I like it. The better one. Yeah. yeah. I was very disappointed because for what I paid for that hotel, the first one, and the pictures and the brochure, it was a yeah. luxury hotel and it was actually a luxury sh hole. But we found out later it was being used by the government for immigrants. Yes. So, yeah. And, I, and was... you know, I know immigrants have got to live somewhere and I'm absolutely all for that and a hundred percent behind them. But they shouldn't have charged us for a luxury no. hotel when you were giving no. us not um, great I, I think I think it I think it was um I think it was rather than belonging to the hotel group because by and large that hotel group that it was is a good hotel group, yeah. Is, is a group is a good group. So I think it was a franchise outfit and I think they they um took advantage of the situation. But I that's, think so. that's in the past. Yeah. But within the Second hotel, we sort of travelled in the middle of the night to, you know, mummy, come, yeah. come on, let's pack up, we're not but, staying here. But, but see, even even that was kind of uh, exciting in a way because it was the sort of thing that well, can happen on a family holiday. Yeah, that's what mummies do. They don't let the children yeah. stay you, in you places. Put, you put the babies to bed and all of a sudden, put the babies to bed and all of a sudden something happens and you've got to get them out and... You know, they're blurry eyed and not have yeah. a clue what's going on. That's it. And it. You know, you get excited about, oh, what's happening now? You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, never mind. We, yeah. So, yeah, that and a few more experiences. Like, you know, as I say, flying across Canada in my dungarees with um, devil horn headband on, scribbling oh. away because I didn't actually get given a kid's. Uh, package that they do, but Mommy Gilly had sorted that out because she gave me a Winnie the Pooh colouring uh, thing to and some some crayons to colour in while we was on the flight. <laughs> oh, that's so, yeah, nice. It was good. Uh, oh, yeah, we were on the way to Toronto where we stopped in a, a BDSM style hotel. Oh, 
and uh, they actually had had a cot in the nursery uh, bit about it and uh, I obviously slept in the cot uh, after after crying a bit because they had, they'd had another another guest and I'd been promised the cot but this other guest was in, in not in the nursery as such she, she was supposed to be a schoolgirl so they put her in the uh, the dormitory instead and told her Good. she couldn't have the cot because that Excellent. was mine yes so yeah that was good and uh on 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 the following day um mummy uh, gilly went off to have her hair done and what have you and the idea was that i would get a taxi and join her later mm -hmm. uh again dressed in my dungarees but had uh, a teddy bear coat and uh mittens that were on string and oh hat. i love that teddy bear coat you look so cute in it yeah so i i had to wear that but in in the period that um Oh, and I had to take my, uh, I had to wear cloth as a, in America and Canada, their diapers. I had to wear cloth diapers and what have you. But I had to take them down to the laundry room to do my own washing. Yeah. Oh, poor baby. Yeah. And uh, oh. as I say, being a BDSM hotel, I was entertained for an hour or so while uh, Mommy Gilly had her hair done. And then at the uh, appointed time, they took me outside, dressed in my coat and what have you, hailed a taxi, told the taxi driver to drop me off at the uh, appropriate place, pay, paid the fares and said, make sure you don't do anything else other than what you're told. <laughs> oh, wow. And what so about... Go I was on. put in the back... Sorry? Carry on, baby. Yeah, I was put in the back of the taxi and... Uh, the taxi driver actually dropped me off at the wrong door. <laughs> oh, this dear. was a, a big shopping centre, a big shopping mall in the centre of Toronto. And uh, <laughs> so I had to walk on my own, like, I, I, I you know, sort of nervously, because I never, ever go out dressed on my own. <laughs> Always with somebody, because mm -hmm. that way I know that if they're not afraid to go out, then why should I be? Good. And uh, then eventually I got there. But on the way, a couple of people shouted out and said, where'd you get your coat? I want one. Oh, and then, it you know, is so a cute again, coat. Yeah, that's right. You know, so even then, it kind of puts you at ease. Most people are not worried about people because they've got so many things to think about themselves. They're just doing their own lives. And what about when you went to the uh, Pride? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the last year before lockdown, just before I retired, we went to um, Folsom Street Fair in San Francisco. And if anybody wants to go there, they will see sights that you've never, ever seen in public before. Never, ever would you experience some of the things that I saw? It is mostly a gay play, gay, gay event. Um, so, but that's not a problem. And the only, the only, the only thing was, it was so very, very crowded, very crowded. So that was a little bit, because you didn't really get time to see the stores and things and what have you. But some of the things that were going on was a bit, uh, a bit uh, different, shall we say? Okay, oh, tell us all about them. <laughs> well, just at the entrance, there was a, a guy stood there with a, a nice, dropped his trousers. He had a, a long, thick cock. And somebody just went <laughs> up to him. Somebody went up to him and just knelt down and started sucking him off. Oh, wow. Oh, right, gosh. So that's, that's the sort of thing. And about two or three year, yards ago, ago uh, away were a couple of policemen just watching. watching. Fair enough. Yeah. And uh, then there was a, a lady spanking people, you know. So, so I got pushed to the front. 
and Mommy Gilly volunteered me to be spanked. But I was wearing a nappy. Oh, you cheat. A a thick cloth diaper. But even then, the the girl did minister in the spanking. She said, what are you made of? It's not having any effect. <laughs> so I said, to my, I just shrugged my shoulders and said, I don't know. She, and she just, she, she was apparently giving all, everything she could get to, to react. She says, well, well done, well done you. I'd never have expected that. <laughs> and yet I've had you over my knee for an over knee spanking and you've squealed just like the baby you are. Yeah. Well, that's different when it's on skin. Ah. Oh. But uh, I, I, I did get spanked in, I did get spanked on the skin because Mummy Gilly, she pulled me over to one side, lent me against the windowsill of a shop, pulled down my diaper and used the paddle that I just bought on it. That's <laughs> right wonderful. in the middle of the street. So, yeah, that's the sort of um, thing that Folsom Street Fair is. So... Next year, if anybody is around and they fancy going, just go because it's fun. Good. And oh, and I wore my super special jacket that we made. Oh yes, that yes. went down well. Well, it took me long enough to sew all the patches and the buttons and the logos on it. Yeah, so well, it you looked well, it went down. It, it went down well at uh, Folsom Street. Yeah. It You'll was... have to post a picture of it on Twitter so everybody can see it. Okay, I will do. I'll, I'll do it where we're at the railway station at San Francisco Airport. There you go. The that would be really nice. Yeah, where we left so, the car. what would be the last story you'd tell us, Cathy? What would be the last? Gosh, I don't know. Um, can you think of anything that I can remember? Oh, I can think of so many things you've done. I can think. Oh, of... there was, there was. I mean, people have seen it on Twitter. I think one of the one of the nice experience. It was 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 very simple, but sliding down the slide. Oh yes, we love that. That yeah, that, 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 that awesome. in all honesty, was one of the the, the 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 many moments that I felt truly like a proper toddler because I couldn't stop giggling. No, well, I, to... I nearly wet myself, darling, when you ended the bottom of that yeah. slide. But no, spinning around the flowers and going up the slide and sliding down, that really, really did. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes so, so... it's the simple things that can yes. make the best baby yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah. But uh, all, all my big birthdays have been special. Uh, my 40th was special because... Uh, I was at Mummy Hazel's and she had the high chair down from the nursery for dinner. And there was uh, her and uh, one of her friends and his his new partner and another baby who was more of a big sister than a baby. And we all had dinner. That was nice for my 40th birthday. Like I say, my 50th birthday was Vancouver Island and uh, the experience that I had with that. But that was a nice trip. And the 60th one was Disney, and the 65th was a really special party somewhere in France. Oh, yes. A very special party for a very special girl. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had many experiences, and by and large, positive. Well, yeah. Oh, I even got a photograph with the police in San Francisco. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I'd like to see that. Yeah, I I blacked out the face. You know, I, I I blanked out the faces on them, so I'll put that up if I can remember where it is. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Well. So. Yeah. What I would say was, um, if anybody that's listening to this podcast has got any questions that they would ask Kathy, then I will have her back on another podcast later this month and I'm sure she would love to either answer your questions or tell you some more experiences yeah. wouldn't you Kathy? Can I, can, yeah I will do can I just uh, mention one very important and serious thing uh, definitely yes go on refer- reference to your um, 
uh, podcast we did the other day when you was on about the paedophilia and what have you. Okay. That is one of the scariest things that goes through my head is that people accuse us of being paedophiles. But to be honest, if you look at the situation, when somebody abuses children and the paedophiles and what have you, A, it's usually within their own family environment. Yeah. But they are taking control of the child. It's about power. That's yeah. right. They're, 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 projecting, about they're power. projecting power into the child. They're the ones exactly. that are abusing and controlling the child. Exactly. We're in, the, in a situation with an adult baby, it's the adult that's giving the power to the person. That's right. That's looking after them and caring you. So it's a complete opposite to what a paedophile is. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a total of, And I just thought I'd need to say that because, you know, that's what I used to say on, on the television shows I did and what have you. And I just thought it was appropriate to say what my view of it is. Well, thank you, Kathy, because everything you just said is 110% correct. A paedophile gets off on being able to make a weak child do something disgusting, on using that child for their own sexual gratification, hurting them, damaging them mentally, physically, in every way imaginable. And an adult baby is just that, a, a baby who needs care, love, attention. They are not in control they are relinquishing control to the adult in that consensual yeah. relationship yeah i i to 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 to, to, to um, reiterate that unfortunately there is there is a a possibility that ab's a, a few ab's and dl's are a uh, bad seed um yeah but i would i would probably guarantee that a percentage as a percentage of uh, the abdl community and what have you there are far fewer as a percentage than there are a in open society and bdsm and domination and what have you as a whole absolutely the, the percentage of those bad seed is smaller than other other groups can't prove it but that's the way i i, I feel it because of the way ab's are well, Nanny Lee just said something very, very poignant. If she had a child, and I'm going to say this and, and back her up on this 100%, I would rather leave my child, as would she if she had one, with an adult baby to be cared for than with a man off the street. Yeah, yeah. Because I know from experience, well, okay, while, while we're on this subject, we'll, we'll approach a bit of a darker side. In over 20 years of seeing adult babies, once I have met uh, a diaper lover who got into my building through all our security checks and he was upstairs and he was in the bath and he was with Nanny Linda. And Nanny Linda came downstairs and she said, this guy has just said something to me that I'm really uncomfortable with. Can you come? And I went upstairs and I said, what did you just say to Nanny, Li uh, to Nanny Linda? Will you please repeat it to me? And he said, and I'll be honest, he said, I like going to primary schools and sitting outside in my car and masturbating. Yeah. I have that, never moved yeah. anybody out of my building as quick in you. Honestly, I gave him his payment back. I told him to get out the bath. He was dressed and he was out of the building within 10 minutes, told never to contact me again. Don't blame you because, you know, he's, no, he's lucky. And I'll be honest. Yeah. I then. Reporting. Yeah. Well, here is where it comes. I do have, I'm a bit like a, a priest. I have to keep things to myself. But what I did do, I spoke to uh, 
a police inspector that visits me and I asked him about the situation you know what where did I stand and he said there's nothing you can do because he said all he does is sit there and masturbate if he'd said he got out and spoke to them then I wouldn't have hesitated I would have reported him and I know that makes me a bad person but if I saw a, a grown man raping a dog I would report him that's after oh, beating God. him to no, death no, that even, yeah no, oh, that, that even the thought of it makes me sick but yeah. I know that there are people out there that are into that type of stuff and if I ever saw someone or suspected someone was abusing a child, I could not stop myself from A, no. interfering and B, reporting him. Many years yeah. ago, I had a friend. Uh, she's not my friend anymore because after what she said, I couldn't deal with it. And she was a social worker. And we were at her house having dinner and she said she'd had a really bad week. She'd been dealing with a family that were abusing a child, hurting it, burning it with cigarettes and stuff like that. It had been into care once and they'd given it back to the mother. And I said to her, and I, I, I couldn't stay in the house. I said, look, you know, if that was me and that was my job, I would be sat outside their house right now so that they were shitting themselves that if they did anything i'd go in with a baseball bat and beat them and i said i don't know how you're sat here now knowing that that could be happening do you want to know what she said when well, i come home they're in god's hands and I've never yeah. spoken to her from that day to this because I couldn't trust myself to. Dr. Brady. I just... That was a cat bell. That was a cat bell. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I don't like stuff like that, Cathy. No. And I know it's... that adult babies in general don't. No, I know. It's, and it's, so it's, it's the one thing that scares the hell out of you when you know if somebody misinterprets and, re and does it and i know it's happened to somebody i knew well went through hell for a while because because he uh like looking in the shop windows at children's dresses yeah order, you know in order to to do what I, you know, I, I've had done because Mummy Hazel used to be a dressmaker as yeah, well. Yeah, I do would, it. Yeah, you you would sort of look at the, the things and say, oh, yeah, that's nice. Wonder if I can have it made. In a big size. Yeah. I do but it all the time. Some, I go some out. Reason, some reason, something, thing, but he had all his computers taken away from him, everything searched, and he went through a month or two of hell. Of course he did. I go because, I go out with Nanny Lee and we look at the shop windows of, of, yeah. of little girls' dresses and we take pictures of them. But, but see, you see, the thing we've got, we're women, so it's different. That's right. It's, 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 it's acceptable. You're, 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 but if I was to do the same thing, people would look at me odd. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, real, realistically, Nanny Lee and I are using our privilege as being women, female, to take those pictures of those dresses, to have them made into maybe other dresses for my nursery with little tweaks. And I do that all the time. I have a, a baby in Saudi Arabia sent me a gorgeous picture of a baby dress that he'd seen in a shop and wanted to know, could I get that made for him? So, yeah, I mean... It is unfair. It's another type of bigotry that a man can't stand and take a picture in a shop window of a mannequin with a baby's dress on without being thought of as a pervert, but a woman can. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it, I, I did give it, given the chance, things are improving and they will continue to improve. But we, we've got a media at the present who are, more interested in speculating and diverting people from the real truth of what's happening in the country. Yeah. They're, they're, they're making making um, relatively trivial uh, things like, you know, exposing ABs and exposing this as a cover-up 
for what's really happening in the, in, in, in the country and the world. Unfortunately. Slowly, yeah. Go on, baby. I say slowly, you know, bit by bit, they're chipping away at different rights as, under pretense of improving things. Unfortunately, it's a slippery slope. I'd like, yeah. I would like to say you're a conspiracy theorist, but I can't because I agree with you. And I agree. I, Nanny Lee and I were talking literally today about this and that all of this unable to travel. I mean, years and years ago, it was unknown for a poor family to go away on holiday. And then package holidays came in. I mean, I remember my gran um, going on one of the very first package holidays when I was a tiny, tiny little girl. And she went to uh, Austria. And so, you know, it wasn't heard of. And now with all this stopping people traveling, Nanny Lee said to me, as she's down munching in some crisps at the moment, she said to me, you know, maybe it's part of a greater plan to stop the normal man having the right to travel. Yeah, maybe. But I think, I think that kind of thing is going to be left to commercial uh, pressures rather than anything else because... People won't be able to afford to go. No. Well, I think yeah. she told me yesterday that Amanda Holden said it cost her family two and a half thousand pounds extra to travel on holiday. Yeah. Well, silly, you know, silly things are going up in price left, right, and centre. I Hearing... just found out that, I've, you know, so, totally unrelated to travel or anything else, but to do with. Um, shipping shortages and whatever, the cat yep. litter I buy has gone up 60%. Oh, I believe you. Yeah. We understand how that feels. I mean, we're in a situation here now, if we buy anything from out of Europe, so from the UK, we're getting charged massive customs on it. Yes. And we're getting charged massive postage. Yeah. And... So it's it's just a big money making exercise. That's all it seems to be. It's, it's it's like baby clothes. They make some really nice adult baby clothes over in the states. In America, by time, yeah. By the time you've added shipping cost and, and tax. Uh, cost, customs duty and VAT, yeah, you're paying more in shipping and tax than you are for the item. I just so, paid. Uh, $85 for a, a baby dress and I paid $68 in tax and postage. Yeah. You, you, I don't know if you've ever come across it, but have a look at a um, website called Dreamy and Creamy. I've seen it. I've seen it. They're based they, in China, aren't they? They're, they're Hong Kong, yeah. And, yeah. And... Uh, thing is but the, the, the thing that gets me is they don't charge the earth for shipping and they 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 don't need to as long as your dress uh, item is under 135 pound you shouldn't have to pay vat on it because that should be paid by the the, the seller rather than the buyer yeah it's a joke, darling. It's yeah. all a joke. I'm, I'm off again on my soapbox. Well, it was <laughs> Sorry. Really... I, I started you off. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay, baby. I... Yeah. Oh, here's Nanny Lee. She's coming. She's coming. No. It always amazes me. I believe for years, we, sorry if I sound a bit more because I've been eating crisps. For years, we never really spoke or did anything. And I think people thought we didn't have an opinion on things oh, we got but we kept ourselves to ourselves like we got um a dm from a sissy thing and it was this sissy twitter account and what they said was exactly what we must have said in our last podcast about having real sissies wear and model the clothes yeah. for brands yeah. because a dress is going to look absolutely fabulous on a woman with a pair of breasts and a waist and a hip it's gonna That's look phenomenal, right. but when you put it on a six foot, five foot odd bloke with big broad shoulders and a bit of a beer belly that wants to be a sissy too, he doesn't look as great, and it's a bit more work has to go into it. Yeah, it yeah. Like no, yeah, I agree. We made, when we got that DM, we've yeah. got to get back to them. But everything they said, it was great, and I think people never really thought we had an opinion on it. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I know what you mean. We, yeah. I feel very strongly that I get, mm, here we go now, I'm getting back on my box. Get Help. Your box. I'm getting, I'm getting on my box. I'm climbing on right now. Okay, this is what really bugs me. When I see pictures of sissies or babies who go wherever they go to visit, I won't name names or anything like that, I'm not into that type of name and shame rubbish, and the clothes that they're in are cheap, tatty, ill-fitting clothes. I like to have all my clothes custom made in a man's size. Yeah. You can't squeeze a man and expect the baby or the city to feel good about themselves in a teeny weeny tiny little cheap rayon dress. So I'd rather plow my money into getting them made and some lovely ladies make some fabulous stuff. I did advertise one on my last um, podcast. She makes gorgeous dresses. Yes, I, think it's I, ready, I saw that. I've seen, seen her website roll. many times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ready to roll. Fabulous lady. Makes lovely sissy dresses. What I call traditional sissy dresses. Yes. You know, yeah. the nice party dress that every little girl wants to wear. And that's yeah. what I base my clothes on. I like the prissy sissy, petticoated crinoline, party dresses, puff sleeves, luxury materials. Yeah. I like baby dresses and sissy dresses. I like my babies what? to wear the uh, little bodies type with the smock. I like yes. those. Babies. I love those. Those are the ones I like with very, very short so the big bum can stick yeah. out at the bottom. Yeah. And then I like well, my sissies to wear party dresses, yeah. prissy dresses. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit shrunken than the last time you saw me. <laughs> I know. But that doesn't so, matter, darling. We have clothes from a size 11 yeah, no, yeah. size 8 to a size 38. So there's no one. <laughs> That's yeah, right. You can no, I, no, I, agree, I agree with you. You you do make you do make um, babies feel really special when it comes to dressing them and uh, the makeup and various other accoutrements. Right. The reason yeah. that I feel strongly about it, baby, is because I do this every day. A baby or a sissy might come to me and it's a one time only thing or once a year and yes. it's a real treat so oh, i yeah. like them to feel phenomenal special i always say it's not the visit it's the memories of the visit that you get most value from i agree having having done many you know, it's those memories, the, the yeah. things you take home locked in your brain. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I've ranted. So thank you, it's baby. Not one of our podcasts without a rant about no, yeah, we've got to rant about something. Thank you, baby Cathy, for That's being right. open, honest, and informative. Yeah. And I am 110% sure that there are babies out there that maybe have never visited anybody, never spoken to an adult baby, who are going to listen to this and realize that they are normal. Of course they're they are. not alone. They're, there's they're a whole alone. community like us. You know, ABs, ABs these days have, have really got it made with the internet and everything else because. You know, when I was uh, kind of just starting off as an adult baby, because I've been a baby all my life anyway, but from the adult time upwards, it's, it's changed enormously. It, it has, you know, yeah. In the, in the last 30 years or so. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't, yeah, we couldn't go on Amazon because there wasn't such a thing as Amazon and buy a baby dress or onesies or anything. You know, it was that rare. So true. Maybe <laughs> yeah. that's why I'm trained because I always had my stuff made. That you know, you just couldn't. Got twenty years ago, it wasn't. Oh, I'll just pop onto Dreamies and Creamies website and pick a nice dress. It was finding a dressmaker, explaining yeah. to her what I did because I was always honest and I never lied. I went and said it because I've 
taken adult babies to be measured for maids' uniforms and party dresses and sissy yes, dresses. I can quite because, believe it. <laughs> because it's exciting. Babies like that. Sissies like that. Well, yeah. They want I, I, that tingle. I was taken, I was taken to, I, I don't know if you've heard of Babykins in Canada. No. Um, they're, they're, uh, they, they supply uh, nap, uh, diapers and... Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I know. And plastic pants and what have you. But I was taken there to the actual factory once. That's and it. I was measured for um, a sleeper, a, you know, baby grow type outfit. Well, that's great. It's fabulous. It's, it's the way life should be. You know, yeah. we, and, we've got to get rid of all yeah. of the, the prejudice and the bigotry and the false rumours and the false accusations and the ignorance right. that but, is I mean, attached you, to our community. Yeah. yeah. You know, America some ways may be mixed up, but as far as AB side are concerned, they've got some good things going on. They've got actual retail stores in some places. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, there's only ever one... Only ever one retail store that I knew about, and that was a place in Dagenham. A few, you know, but sadly things happened, and it they had to close. close. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. All right, baby. Well, I shall say goodbye to you now, and if you Thank could you. say goodbye to all our listeners, and we will be chatting again next week. I'm absolutely sure. <laughs> well, I've got to think of something else to say. But okay then. Night night. All right. Say bye bye, baby. Bye bye, everybody. Big thank you to baby Kathy for that wonderful interview. But also, a naughty baby Kathy got Mummy and Nanny Lee on our soapbox. So that could earn you a spanking. Um, I will leave you all now and I will say goodbye from me, Mummy Amanda. And even though you haven't really heard me in this podcast much, goodbye from me, Nanny Lee. <laughs>